Charts help us create a visual representation of our spreadsheet data. And the Gantt chart gives us a visual representation showing how a project will be managed over time. Okay, let's create our Gantt chart. First, you want to create a project table. You want to create a column for the task name, the start date, and duration. Then you want to list each of your tasks along with those actual start dates and the duration. Now, in this example, I am putting together a webinar training for a client that I have. So I have each task listed with the start date, end date, and duration. So you don't actually need to have this end date for the Gantt chart, but it is nice to be able to have that to calculate the duration. So you can see here that I'm using a formula with my start date and my end date. There are three ways you can enter the formula for duration, and it really just depends on your scheduling needs. So let's take a look at that. Now if I'm using a simple formula where I'm taking the end date minus the start date, it's going to return one day. So it's not counting this first start date right here. So if you need to actually see this as two days, then we need to come over here and use this formula. So I'm, it's still a simple formula, and I'm still taking the end date minus the start date, but I'm adding one back to it. So it's calculating my start date and the second date. So it's returning two. So again, it kind of depends on how you need your scheduling to work. But let's look at one more formula and that is going to be the network days formula. So what's kind of nice about this is it calculates work days. If this is actually for a work project and you're not going to be working on Saturday and Sunday and you just want to calculate Monday through Friday, then network days might be the way to go. If I look up here at my formula bar, I'm using network days, and let's go ahead and open that up so we can see that. So I enter a start date and I enter the end date and then that tells me how many days and as you can see here how I mapped it out so I'm seeing that my start date we're looking at this one right here for seven days it's counting that first day and it's going Tuesday through Friday but it is skipping Saturday and Sunday and then it's continuing on so again you have three options your network days function or a couple of simple formulas. Okay, let's get back to creating our Gantt chart. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is select uh, my columns that have my task name and the start date. I am going to include these header titles for both of these columns. So I select that, go to my insert tab, and here is my bar or column chart. Click the drop down arrow and I need a stacked bar. So you can do a 2D or a 3D. 3D gives it a little bit more pizzazz, but I'm going to stick with the 2D stacked bar chart for now. So now I need to actually add my duration to this chart. So on my chart design tab, I'm going to go to select data, and you can see that we have the start here but I need to add that duration. So click on Add. And my series name is Duration Days. And then my series values, I want to get rid of what's already there. And then I'm going to select the range that has my duration. And then I click OK. And click OK again. But we still have a few more tweaks to do. So as you have probably noticed, the task on your chart are listed in the reverse order that they are over here in your data set. So let's correct that. I'm going to double click on my list of tasks and it opens up my format axis pane. So if I just look down here a little bit under my axis options, I have categories in reverse order. I'm going to put a check mark there. So now that matches the way that the input is for my task name over here in my data set. And you'll notice that our values, our date values, are now at the top also. So this is looking a little bit better 
to read. Let's go ahead and do three more things that are going to make these dates easier to see. I'm going to click on my date values. This is the value axis. And with my pane still open, I'm still in my format axis. Now, if you had closed this out, again, you can double click. Or on my format tab, where it says horizontal axis, I can click on format selection. So a couple of ways to bring this pane up. Now, I want the start date here to match my start date for my project. Notice that what you see here, this is how Excel looks at a date. It's a serial number, but we can actually just type in a date and Excel will convert that for us. So my project starts on 2-9 of 22, so I'm just going to put in 2-9-2-2, and that's going to give me my minimum. Now notice that my value axis, my dates up here, also change. For my units, my major is set at 10, so I'm going every 10 days. You can look up here and see it's 2-9, then 2-19. It's kind of scrunched up. We're going to fix that. But I'm going to change this to 5. You can. This is how many days in between. What's going to be the interval? So do I want 2 days, 5 days? Now you can see it is kind of scrunched up, but don't worry. We're going to take care of that. I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to expand my number category down here. And there's a couple of things I want to do here. So this is my type that I have right here. That's a lot of text to be trying to show in this small chart that I have. So I'm going to change the type to just month and day. Let's see what I have. So I think this one right here looks good. Now, if you need to keep the year, because maybe your project is going across two separate years, you, you know, just depends on what you need your Gantt chart to look like. So I'm going to change that. Now you can see already it's a little bit easier to read. Now I want to angle my dates. So I'm going to click on this next icon right here. I'm still in my Format Axis pane. And here is my text direction. Click this drop down arrow. And I really don't see anything I want. If you did want it just going up and down, that might actually make it a little bit easier to read. It would be lined up right with your grid line here. Um, but you can do a custom if you wanted to. So if I wanted to put this right at a negative 48, then I get a slight slant. But again, it's how you're going to customize this and how is it going to be easiest to read. So I actually think I might go with this one right here. That's pretty easy to read. I'm going to go ahead and close my format axis. And I could probably resize this chart a little bit and I can move it around as necessary. But let's look at a few ways to format my data series that I have here. The red here is the actual duration. So do I really need this blue to be here? And I can do a few things with that. Let's look at shape styles. Let's see what we have there. And if I hover over any of these, you can see that it gives me a preview of what that's going to look like. Now, if I go with any of these here, it's going to be transparent. So if you want to see those just a little bit, maybe have them faded out somewhat, then you could choose one of these lighter colors. If you don't want to see it at all, then right here you can choose these transparent uh, presets. I'll go ahead and select that. Now if I click away from my chart, now I can only see the duration. So I can see here the, the, the duration for when I need to email my point of contact starts on 2-9 and goes for a couple of days. Now because my intervals between dates are five days, it might be a little bit hard to tell that this is at two days. If you did want to be able to see the actual when that started, then I'm going to select my chart again, go back to Format, and let me just undo that so we can see I'm going to go to Shape Fill, and I can pick a color from here, so I could do something a little bit lighter. Or again, if I go back to my shape styles, there might be something here. So maybe I just want a slightly lighter color. Maybe I just want an outline. Let's see what an outline might look like. 
So something like that. So again, it just kind of depends on what your needs are for your chart. Let's just do a few more finishing touches and then we'll be all done. So we might want to remove the extra white space in between our bars here. That is called our gap width. So if I select our data series, which belongs to our duration, again, I'm going to double click on it to open up my format data point, or you can always go to your format tab. Here's the series and click on format selection. So again, a couple of different ways to get um, into our formatting pane over here. My gap width, if I decrease that, then it pulls these bars closer together. I can also play with the series overlap, but I'm going to leave that at the max 100%. And depending on, it makes it a little bit easier to read sometimes if you play around with this gap width. So again, wherever you think you might want it, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. It gives me a little bit more uh, space to work with. Now let's take a look at our grid lines too. Sometimes if we remove the grid lines or if we add grid lines, it's easier to read. But right here, I'm going to click on this little plus. This is my chart elements. And let's take a look at grid lines. I already have my primary major vertical grid lines showing. But what would happen if I take a look at my primary major horizontal grid lines? This may make it easier to read. And the minor, that might make it too messy, too much going on. But again, it just kind of depends on what's going to work for you. So if I put both of these up here, then I can really follow along where these are at. Then finally, I can just do some resizing. So that's looking pretty good. Now, as you update your schedule in real time, the Gantt chart is going to reflect those changes. So maybe my email for my point of contact, I am going to start on 2-9. So I'm going to say, well, this is going to end. I want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and just put in, I'll put 219 just to make this really obvious. 219.22. And you can see my Gantt chart here. It reflected that change that I made there. So you put in a lot of hard work to create this Gantt chart. You might think about saving this chart as a template. And how you save a chart as a template is within the chart area, right click and save as template. Then when you go to insert chart, you will have that template. Then that template would be listed here under templates and it would be, it would show up there. Okay, now it's time for you to give this a try. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. And make sure to check out my other videos.